here's where the problem is. It wasn't a level playing field because when we would report these areas or people that are breaking the law, mm -hmm. the reply that we get from the police is that we don't have the resources to go after those. But there is the resources to observe every single thing that we're doing as a company. Yeah. So every single metal recycler that was obeying these laws did pay a price. We've all had to pay the price for all the reporting that was done. And there is one guy that got it overturned through his lawyer. And that was Amrula at Power Recycling. And he got that overturned as unconstitutional. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. We are living in a country where the... Justice Minister's vehicle has been stolen three times in three years, according to a CBC report. And if that doesn't paint a picture of just how serious the car and catalytic converter theft problem is in this country, just look at the fact that these crimes have increased 20 to 45 percent in major cities right across this nation. A few months back, I was very fortunate to be joined by the uh, owner of Big House Converters here, and that being Eric Grandmaison. I encourage you to check out that report. It was an in-depth dive into the extents to which criminality has invaded automobile recycling and some of the repercussions that have occurred uh, as a result of that criminality within this industry. Uh, unfortunately, since that time, due to increased costs, plus the fact that these law-abiding companies simply cannot compete with people engaged in dealing with stolen goods, Big House Converters has had to close their doors. Madam Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government, crime is up nearly 40% across the country. The Liberals removed jail time for car theft in Bill C-5, and since then car theft is up 300% in Toronto and 34% overall in Canada. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the crime. Every six minutes a car is stolen. Insurance rates have risen as much as 50% at a time when Canadians can least afford it. Common sense conservatives will bring back jail, not bail for criminals. Will the Liberals? So I'm going to be joined once again by Eric Gromizone to talk about how he has become another casualty of organized crime and corruption within this industry and to talk about some hopeful ways that this situation might be ameliorated. Uh, catalytic converter theft and metal recycling theft and, and uh, auto theft, it's all really tied together. And I saw the kind of big picture that was going on with the industry. I wanted to do my part in what I see. And, and we developed secure mark of in number and printing service that could be deployed at all dealerships across the country. And then it gives police an, uh, a traceable mark that ties the, the converter to the vehicle that it came from so you can incriminate the criminal. So we initially did that. Um, now with the whole downturn of metal pricing, a lot of government thinks that their policies are effective mm -hmm. and really they're just sorely mistaken because as soon as metal prices are going to go back up, uh, there's going to be a huge rash of converter theft again and the criminal element is there waiting for it. So we, we did talk about how um, th there are some rules in place and they even put some signs up and they've said they're aware of the issue. Yes. Um, but you have sort of an insider's perspective um, and you've proposed some things that would actually work to tackle this, not just sort of do this. Do you think that they're misinterpreting the signs? and press releases and commitments to action, um, given that there has been a decrease because metal prices are down, do you think that they think they're being effective and, and in fact they aren't and as soon as the prices go back up, we're going to see an uptick? Correct. Um, part of the reason why Big House Converters closed um, is a super low market price. Mm -hmm. So our door, uh, our customers don't want to sell right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, doesn't matter what, you know, how competitive we can be when the average price for a converter is only $125 when it yeah. takes uh, all converters in, in combined. So when we do an auto recycling yard and they got a few hundred converters and that's, they're going to be their average. They don't like that. So they're like, well, I'm just going to hold on to them. Mm -hmm. And so... Then also, too, for a thief, a thief isn't going to go and steal one for the risk of $125 because, you know, what What criminal is going to risk it for a $100 unit right. to then go and pay him $50 for? So there's just, there's no money in it for the criminals right now. You know, whereas previously when the metal prices were high and we had tons of material coming in from auto recyclers, from end of life metal recyclers, and also the tuners and re retailers and that kind of thing, uh, the average price is around about... $400 at its peak, four to $500 yeah. at its peak. And that's when platinum was over 2000 and now, or just under 2000 and palladium was over 3000 an ounce and rhodium was sky high. It was over 25,000 an ounce at one point. Yeah. So that was, that means there was a frenzy and because there is zero regulation on the converter recycling industry, no one of knowledge that tries to do everything. Everyone in law enforcement and government that I talked to, they were pulling at straws. They say, we have no idea how to do this. Yeah. And, and I, 
always said, hey, I am here, I'm willing, I can teach everybody, uh, you know, I know the industry inside and out from back to front. And we got to look at this as a cradle to grave scenario. And how do we regulate the grave when it comes to converter recycling, auto recycling, there's no death certificate to a VIN, mm -hmm. meaning we don't know where vehicles go to die meaning that VIN numbers are harvested constantly. Uh, stolen vehicles are re with those harvested VIN numbers. And like, we, we went through all that. Yeah. But unless government is willing to put some resources to the task of how do we solve the end of life of vehicles, they can't combat auto theft. Right. There is zero help for them because we don't know where vehicles go to die. Is so it sort of like a death by a thousand cuts where on one hand, when, when business is booming, people would rather take these things to sort of elicit stolen places that don't, check their things don't have those additional costs maybe pay more and then on the other hand when it's quiet there's simply no business to do well i'd probably preface it like this when you have silver bullion or gold bullion or whatever precious metal bullion to go and sell do you need id do you need do they require from you uh what you're going to be uh what you're going to need to sell that material and then there is none yeah so you can sell your silver bullion get fifty thousand cash just like that. So the converter recycling industry is kind of like pop can recycling. It's just a lot more valuable. And to those that produce them legally from vehicles that get recycled or they're uh, a muffler shop that takes these things off, customers don't want them, uh, that's side cash money for them or even for dealerships or for all automotive shops, converters get replaced on a regular basis. So then a lot of people want to just look at that as cash. And when the city of Calgary put these bylaws on us that didn't affect any uh, any travelers from other areas that would come in and purchase, uh, then that really slowed down our door traffic because we did obey that law. Uh, it took you and I all of about 10 minutes to drive to the relatively small area of the city where this is happening yes and to see unmarked white vans uh -huh. unloading mass catalytic converters yeah. and I, I don't think it would take sherlock holmes to figure this out now that's not to say all those people are engaged in criminal activity mm -hmm. but we do know that these things are being stolen on a mass and being taken in these unmarked vans yeah. we it took us 15 minutes to find a few instances of this happening yeah how hard is it to seriously hinder these effects check those check those vehicles if they're around like the vehicles coming in bringing those catalytic converters in check if they're at the locations or near the locations yeah. where these uh, catalytic converters are being stolen yeah well i mean it's really easy but there's there's numerous recycling and auto parts places springing up everywhere across the city yeah. you see cars stacked upon cars and this is happening in alleyways and you know really uh i'm heartbroken that the industry has gotten as dark as it has, and I'm heartbroken because I, I invested my life and my heart and my soul to create a transparent transaction when it comes to catalytic converters. That's mm -hmm. why we, we created a sample line, a laboratory, all these other kind of factors. Um, well, you can't compete against people that are willing to pay more money. And yeah. then if they're, if they're willing to do illegal activities and then you're obeying the law, but here's where the problem is, it wasn't a level playing field because when we would report these areas or people that are breaking the law, mm -hmm. The reply that we get from the police is that we don't have the resources to go after those. But there is the resources to observe every single thing that we're doing as a company. Yeah. So every single metal recycler that was obeying these laws did pay a price. That We've all had to pay the price for all the reporting that was done. The work we are going to be doing in the area of auto theft. I come from Oakville, Ontario, represent that riding, and I can tell you that everyone I know has had their vehicle stolen or has a friend who has had their vehicle stolen. And these vehicles being stolen also include break and enters and crime is a very serious concern for individuals across Ontario and our country generally. There's no doubt this inaction on criminality has contributed to the downfall of this business. Okay, I'm not going to let you cry, make me cry this time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, it is heartbreaking. And, and I think that what it is really hard is when you have staff that give you their life mm -hmm. and they give every part to the company because, you, you know, if you care about them, they care about you. Right. And when I made the decision to let everybody go and everyone came up and gave me a hug or whichever and it was with tears that I that I did that and you know because I cared for them and um, 
So that's where it was heartbreaking. But also, too, how do you keep people motivated and happy and prideful in the industry that they're working in when whenever they tell someone what industry they're in, they're like, oh, so you buy stolen converters? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the government won't listen to the legitimate side of the industry to how they can police it. Yeah. You know, and then they, the, the city of Calgary blames us for the problems. And it's like, meanwhile, you saw the sign that was down the end of our road. Yeah. But yet it wasn't around any other place that, yeah. that purchases catalytic converters. Do you have any sort of final petitions? You're obviously going to keep advocating and working in this industry aside mm -hmm. from your business here that is closing down, unfortunately. But is there any sort of message for folks out there who, who could make a difference, who could help? Do you have anything you'd like to say to them? Yeah. Uh, you know, I worked with uh, Constable Pierre. Um, and he was an awesome guy. He did a report. The reply that he got back from his superiors that, they, yeah, in one to two years, we're going to table that. Yeah. So like, if, if no one's listening, you know, like the crime is just going to continue to increase. Yeah. And guess what? Those finances, they go right to street crime. Yeah. So they go right to drug trafficking in the streets because stolen converters are stolen by drug addicted, you know, poor drug addicted people. And it helps to give them more drugs. Yeah. And then it feeds the whole, it yeah. feeds that whole thing there. So I didn't have my faith. Uh, that God will see me through and see my family through. And then like, I'd rather honestly keep my business or sorry, lose my business and keep my family yeah. than keep my business and lose my family. So thankfully I got a good wife who, who's helping to keep me stable mm -hmm. and, uh, God bless her for that. And you know, it's, but what kept me going is that I never wanted to deal with stolen material, knowing mm -hmm. that it was stolen. Yes. Some slips through the cracks and the police look at that. Oh yeah, you bought, but yet not every converter that everyone brought in here, um, you know, was, was completely good because like George, he was, he was scrapping cars yeah. and then he ended up finding a car and who knows, whatever, right? But that's where I really believe that we need some regulation on the auto recycling industry, yeah. who can haul them because there's there's cars constantly being transacted. All you need is a bill of sale. Yep. There's no one following up on this yeah. and there's no one screening the vehicles. They, they don't need an inventory to bring them into the shredders. Right. And then once that vehicle is shredded, it's say Levy. There's yeah. no knowing where those things go. So yeah. I would gladly work with the government. I'd gladly work with policymakers yeah. to, to make some effective policy. And I'd gladly help to grow the Alberta Auto Recycler Association uh, if they're if they're in help and so uh, Auto Recyclers of Canada. I know the director of that association. If the government would just listen to industry, we can make some effective changes. Yeah. Otherwise, like City of Calgary, you're, you're out our property taxes, you're out our business being here, where now it's just in the hands of more underground where yeah. people aren't paying taxes on it. Right. To learn more about the breakdown of law and order that we are seeing in cities right across this country, I'm encouraging you to check out all of our coverage at fixourcities.com.